Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, back again with uh, another Tudor History event for you. Um, I'm here every day of 2019 with Tudor events such as births, deaths, marriages, executions, baptisms, battles, you name it and I've got it for you. Now today I'm going to take you back to 1609, which you're then going to say, but that's not in the Tudor period. Well, it's actually the death date of someone. So this man is actually a well-known Tudor man, a very well-known Elizabethan man. So the 26th of March, 1609 is the date of death given for John Dee, um, this man. And this actually is a book I'd recommend. It's called The Arch Conjurer of England by Glyn Parry. And that is a fantastic book on John Dee. So that man, John Dee, was an astrologer, mathematician, alchemist, uh, spy, philosopher, historian, geog geographer, and statesman, and an advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. So a very, very important man, a very accomplished man. And that date, the 26th of March, 1690, is the date given by John Pointy Pontois. It's, it's spelt Pontois, but I think it's Pontois. Um, a merchant who inherited some of John Dee's books. Now, this date is not just him that uh, gives this date. The date is also backed up by John Dee's son, Arthur, who gave this date for the death of his father in a letter, and also by Anthony Wood who told Elias Ashmole that Dee had died in Pontoise's house in Bishopsgate Street on the 26th of March 1609. Dee was buried in Mortlake Church near to his home Mortlake in Surrey. Now that is the date of death given by those sources but the traditional date that sort of gone down in history for Dee's death, however, is December 1608, so a little bit of difference there. Let me tell you some facts about John Dee, because he's completely fascinating and he's well worth researching and reading up about, because he's just mind-blowingly accomplished, uh, uh, had his finger in so many pies, I mean, alchemy, uh, I'll tell you more now. So, he was born in London on the 13th of July, 1527. He was the only child of Roland Dee, who was chief sewer to King Henry VIII and who went on to become a merchant. And Dee's mother was called Joan or Joanna. His father's family were from Wales. Uh, Dee studied at St John's College and Trinity College, Cambridge, obtaining a Master's in 1548. And then, if that wasn't enough, he went on to the University of Louvain and studied maths, geography, astrology, astron astronomical observation and civil law. So, wow, <laughs> incredible. When he returned to England after studying abroad, the Earl of Pembroke, the Grey family and also John Dudley, Duke of Northumberland, all acted as his patrons. So those are powerful people to have as your patrons. And he was also hired as tutor to John Dudley's son, Robert Dudley, who was the future Earl of Leicester, Queen Elizabeth I's favourite. And he also taught King Edward VI as well. He also worked as a rector, so he was a clergyman too. After the fall of his patron, the Duke of Northumberland, he worked as a maths teacher in London and also taught merchants mathematical and navigational skills. He was arrested in 1555 in the reign of Queen Mary I for casting horoscopes. It was said that he had cast the nativities of Mary, her husband Philip and Princess Elizabeth and there were more charges added to this. Sorry, I'm finding it hard to talk in my throat. There were more charges added to this, uh, witchcraft and conjuring as well. So this could have really uh, brought him down. You know, he could have, he could have ended up being um, imprisoned uh, for a long time or perhaps even executed for this. 
but fortunately he was able to convince the Bishop of London of his religious orthodoxy and so he was only imprisoned a short while. I think it probably helped that he'd got some you know, powerful friends. Now, Mary I died in 1558, so, you know, this kind of woman that had perhaps been a bit of an enemy to him, um, she was out of the picture, and his career really took off in Queen Elizabeth I's reign, thanks to his patrons, Robert Dudley, who of course was uh, the Queen's good friend, and also William Herbert, Earl of Pembroke. Um, he was in charge of drawing up a special astrological chart to find the most auspicious um, time and date for Queen Elizabeth's uh, coronation because she wanted a good start uh, to her reign. So he drew up a special chart to choose the date and time. He was a man who, he was a scholar and he collected books, as you can imagine. He built up an extensive library, one of the most extensive libraries in Europe, at his home in Mortlake in Surrey. In 1592, he claimed that it held over 3,000 books and 1,000 manuscripts. He practised alchemy. He wrote books on maths, astronomy and navigation. But here's the bit that I find really interesting, fascinating. In the 1580s, he worked with apothecary, alchemist and medium Edward Kelly. So two interesting men coming together here. They travelled around Europe, they held seances and allegedly communicated with angels in a special angelic language. In Prague, they worked under the patronage of the Rosenberg family, experimenting with alchemy and continuing their work with angels. So they even had this special angelic language that they used to communicate with angels. And it was Kelly who was sort of the medium um, who did the communication. Um, John Dee received a doctorate in medicine from the University of Prague when he was there in the 1580s, hence why he's called Dr John Dee. In 1589 he returned to England and he lived in Manchester until 1605, acting as a warden of the Collegiate Church at Manchester. And then in 1605 he returned to his home at Mortlake and spent his last days with his daughter Catherine. But he didn't just rest and just have a lovely retirement. He carried on his work communicating with angels, but this time using scryer Bartholomew Hickman instead of Edward Kelly. Dee was married either twice or three times. There is controversy over how many times exactly because his second wife is not known, but it is thought that he had a second wife. So he was married that's three times, and his third wife, or second wife, Jane, he shared her with Edward Kelly. Now, I like this bit because Kelly claimed that the angels told him that that's what they, they thought that they should do. So that's great, isn't it? The, the sceptical part of me thinks, oh yeah, Kelly fancied her, so yeah, yeah, the angels said that I've got to have an affair with her and we've got to share her. So they shared her. Dee had eight children. Um, his son Arthur Dee, whom not many people have heard of, but he was an accomplished man as well, was a writer on alchemy and also acted as physician to Queen Anne, who was the wife of King James I. And he also acted as physician to Tsar Michael Romanov. Sadly, although John Dee, I've just told you about this amazing man, this career that he had all of the things that he did, his extensive library and that, although he was this uh, favourite, this royal favourite in Elizabeth's reign, did so much, um, this favour did not continue into James I's reign and sadly he died in poverty and obscurity which just seems mad and so very sad that such an accomplished man could die that way. But his son, Arthur, um, was a real legacy to him and was very accomplished as well. So this is the book again, Glyn Parry, The Arch Conjurer of England, John Dee. That is a brilliant 
brilliant read uh, so if you want to know more about this fascinating man then I recommend that I'll be back tomorrow with another On This Date in Tudor History event. You can subscribe by just clicking the button that's around there, hit the bell to be notified of new videos, and please do comment if you want to share anything below. I'm sorry I can't like and reply to every comment. I'm getting quite a lot of comments at the moment, but I really do appreciate you following my channel and my videos. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>